<laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome back to Two Comic Book Dudes. This is our new comic book day, Sporktacular number 10. So figured we'd do that because like a spork, it's like, you know, anyway, it's just something stupid that whatever. Um, spork you all. Anyway, so uh, this week we... Uh, we every Wednesday we try. I know it's like Thursday, but you know it's uh, just because things happen in life. Um, happens. We pick up our comics. We get on here, do a show for you guys, showing all the cool comics that we have. Um, this week we've got a ton of books to go through. Uh, this will be for nine, 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 nine. Uh, so everything from September the ninth that came out. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about some other things that happened this week, some newsy kind of stuff as well as we're going through. Um, but we'll we. Uh, um, I guess we usually start with introductions, right? It's been so long since I've done a show, I forgot how to do it. Mm. My name's Aaron Clutter. I'm editor-in-chief of Comic Booked. We are a wonderful website, family-friendly sometimes, um, open for everyone. Anybody who wants to come and browse our wonderful collection of articles and stuff, please do. Um, we Comics, movies, games, videos, games, board games, all that kind of stuff, TV stuff, um, all kinds of things. So uh, even some wonderful editorials bringing – you know, real world issues out to everybody. Anyway, there's there's some in there. There are. Uh, yeah. But with me, as always, on the other hey, side of the screen. Hey everybody, I'm Justin. I'm the managing editor of Comic Book. Whatever our timings <laughs> off, it's a fine. It's fine. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, yeah. So Justin just uh, just came back from Dragon Con this past weekend, and uh, then some other cascading issues after that but uh yeah. we'll talk about dragon con a little bit justin you want to tell us what wonderful adventures you had on your three-day tour into uh dragon land well i think i've said this everywhere that i've talked about it but if you didn't dress up if you weren't cosplaying you felt out of place that was the first con i've ever been to where cosplayers completely outnumbered people in street clothes wow I've, yeah, it was it was nuts. It was nuts. Uh, spread out over five hotels and Jeez. however many blocks you want to think about. And Atlanta's not flat by any means whatsoever. Atlanta's hilly. Oh, my gosh. So the first day I walked 10 miles. Um, the, second, the second day was like seven and a half. And the third day was way less than like two. <laughs> wow. And you saw the parade and everything? No. Oh, you didn't? Okay, so Jen... That was um, way too early in the morning to get up and drive down to Atlanta. So Jen, Jen Greeley's our uh, cosplay specialist, uh, part of our group. And right. she was she must have been there taking a bunch of pictures because she's put yep. up some really great stuff. She's done two articles the, of the cosplay um, parade, the parade there. Parade. Yeah. So that was some really they cool stuff. They must have had a hotel or something to stay down there. There's, Probably. There was so much, they travel all a, over. It was a horrible... Like, the weekend was poorly planned for the city of Atlanta because uh, there were football games and gosh. pride parades and festivals at the parks. And so they were estimating over 2 million people into Atlanta over the weekend. Yeah. So it was not good. 70,000 of that, which was for dragon con. And that was a record attendance for dragon con. Oh Last yeah. Year it was like 64,000 year before that. It was like 50 something thousand. So it's just growing every year. It's going to be nuts. They got a, that's cool. Yeah, they need to put it in the dome or something. I don't know. It's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they'll split it, split it into two cons someday. You know, something I was just, uh, I was kind of laughing because I was just looking at my myself there in the the image, and I, I kind of feel like Zephod Beeblebrox. Since you got two heads there, since I got two heads. <laughs> anyway, sorry. <laughs> Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy reference. Yeah, um, it's good, so... it's good show. It's good book. Yeah, so we we do have some great articles up on our site that, about uh, Dragon Con coverage, and I'm sure Justin, you'll be putting together something this week. Yep, I got video and pictures and all this other stuff to throw together too. So it'll be coming up. Hopefully, this it'll be this weekend. I'm not going to commit to saying tomorrow, but this yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's lots of stuff, lots of stuff going on for us this weekend too because we're getting ready for a, a convention that uh, we're going to help with, uh, not comic book related. Although we are bringing some comic book related stuff to the convention, so that's kind of cool. Oh, nice. um, but uh, we've I've got a couple big things that I'm working on right now, which uh, have to do with Disney Infinity 3.0, which we did a show on uh, a week or so ago. And the new game was released, and we got all the cool stuff to play with. And I've played it like this much. And I need to get in there and play some more and do a full review. And uh, I did an interview 
with uh, one of the developers who was actually worked on the the sculpts for the different figures. Oh, wow. And he answered some great questions, and I can't find the file so that I can transcribe the uh, interview. That's terrible. So oh, no. it's in my phone somewhere. I just have to find it. But anyway, moving on. Um, last Friday was Force Friday. Can't forget to talk about that a little bit because we are still kind of in that, that comic book week. Um, you know, cool stuff that was out in all stores, all the new new toys related to uh, some new Star Wars movie or something that's coming yeah. out. I don't yeah, know. I haven't heard of anything. So. Some, like Darth Vader's Return, or I, I can't remember what it was called. Jar Jar Binks Saves the Universe. Oh, yeah. Jar Jar's Redemption. Right. <laughs> no, it's uh, Star Wars 7, The Force Awakens. We're not retarded. Um, you know, anyway. But uh, there was some really cool stuff. Um, some great new pop figures, which we'll, uh, we're going to actually do a separate show, hopefully, someday, uh, where we start talking about our different pops collection. Um, I can throw out real quick um, one of the cool ones that I got from Hot Topic. This is uh, Ray, which is one of the new characters in Force Awakens and then Hot Topic exclusive. So it's pretty cool. And actually today I just picked up like the hottest character in uh, Star Wars 7. Nobody actually knows anything about him other than he's a funky little droid. Looks like a basketball with a head. BB-8. Funky little droid. Probably he is the dark Sith Lord of the, of the movie and he'll kill everybody. Um, but, you know, for now you're buying toys for your kids going, hey, he's so wonderful. Um, but yeah, pretty neat stuff. So... Anyway, let's talk about comics. That's what people are here for. Comics. Yeah. We're in a dungeon, everybody. <laughs> you feel this? I feel dungeon like. I'm looking at the screen going, Well, I can't get out that door. <laughs> you didn't this roll door. high enough uh right. what is it? Um dexterity, right? Dexterity um, Yeah. I felt this. my dex roll. Dang it. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to start off with DC this week because we always start off with DC for whatever reason. And you didn't get any. I got a couple, so we'll take a look at what I got. And this was Batman 44. Um, and this one is actually a good orange, origin story from what I've heard. This is uh, the new villain, Mr. Bloom. And in this one, it takes place right after Zero Year. So we get a flashback. <laughs> So we actually have um, Bruce Wayne as Batman, and it's not um, Commissioner Gordon as Bat Chappy. Hmm. So, <laughs> and Greg Capullo, it looks like he took uh, a week off or something. So we got a different artist, but it's kind of a you know it's dark and gritty. It 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 fits for what this story I guess needs to be um, to tell the origin of this of Mister Bloom, who's the new villain in the story arc that's going on currently. So okay. you take an issue to go back. And um, I should next. just buy that. You said I should just buy that and put it away in my box. Yeah, if you're not um, buying Batman and you're in your play comic books, you should be. Okay. You should just buy it, put it in your box because it's Batman. <laughs> Turn it's around, ridiculous. put it on eBay. It's ridiculous to go. You just go look and you look at um, like Batman New Fifty Two, hmm. and like a run of four or five of the books is all way more than it should be. So Weird. But people are willing to pay it. You yeah, know, maybe my it. Batman and Superman books will be worth something. No, those won't. But <laughs> that's the only thing hey, I bought. Well, right near the time the movie comes out, maybe. Maybe I like the 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 first. You know, I think I bought maybe the first twelve issues that first year. I I thought the the storyline oh, was interesting. The new fifty two one. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, next uh, is Justice League United number twelve. Um. I don't know. I'm still on the fence with this this book. I, I don't know. It's it's losing my interest quickly. It really is. They changed the team up so much. It's not even close to what it used to be uh, pre-convergence. So that one's gone. And then this book I picked up because I'm following the artist on Instagram. And he keeps posting up pictures of panels of the book. And I'm like, it looks so good. I want to get it but it has a convergent stigma to it. Oh. So number four came out this week. I picked up number one just to get on the story. It's <laughs> Earth 2 Society, number one. I've heard um, good things about it. I re- the art is great. Like, yeah. this just looks great. Like, it's done very, very well. Mm-hmm. I just, it's just going to take me a minute to figure out if I like these characters or not. Yeah. Because they're all our Earth 2 characters and... I don't know, but I wanted to give it a try just because I like the art. I wanted to give it a try. Yeah, that's cool. That's it for DC. 
Okay. And there were a lot of other DC books. We just don't buy them because. Well, and, we, and DC, DC's hurting. If you, if you haven't heard, DC lost $2 million. Yeah. Like their sales I, are hurting. And I know some of that's got to be probably factored in with the move money and stuff like that out to LA. But Yeah, yeah. Well, I even opted not to get – I really like Harley Quinn, and there was some Harley Quinn road trip special this yep. week, and I, yeah. I didn't buy it. I'm just – you know, I usually pick up pretty much everything that uh, Jimmy Palmiotti and Amanda Connor work on, but I, with everything else I got this week, I'm like, I'm going to keep it down. And you know, I think I can mine below, well below what I normally spend, which is good. Yep, um, good. My wife was happy. <laughs> so, but you know, there, there's just a time when you got to cut your losses and go. There's there's certain books that I'm just not going to pick up. Yep. I'm with you. But, but. There's always room for a new company when a new book comes out, especially when it's by somebody that you really like. Um, so this week I picked up something from American Gothic Press, which I'd never heard of before. Um, but this book is Broken Moon, and it's by Steve Niles and Nat Jones. And I'll tell you, the artwork on it is really interesting. Um, it's it's uh, very reminiscent of of uh, some of the stuff you saw maybe in uh, 30 days of night with uh, Steve Niles and Ben Templesmith. Um, pretty cool stuff. And definitely some vampire related stuff in here. Uh, werewolves uh, just, you know, just looks really cool. Um, so, uh, you know, Steve Niles, uh, you can't go wrong with that. You got to pick up at yeah. least the first issue, check it out. So it looks, looks yeah. really good. Well, now that you mentioned that, you know, you were telling me before we went live here, that uh, he did 30 days a night. I didn't know it. So I want, I'm, I want to go back and pick that up this weekend just so I can have it. Take a look. Yeah, it was def it's definitely a good one. So, and, you know, 30 days of night was one of those things where it's like, uh, you know, a lot of people didn't pick it up. And then it was just so popular. And it, it I mean, skyrocketed. That first issue was a couple hundred bucks within a few weeks of, of release just because it was like, oh, everybody wants it. Um, mm -hmm. And it leveled out after, you know, eventually. But oh, still, yeah. it's, it's hard to get still. So. Crazy. All right. Um, I have something from Oni Press. You don't have any Oni Press stuff, right? I bet. I bet you got Onyx. Nope. Bunker. Nope. The Bunker. Oni Onyx is uh, IDW. Ah. So this is uh, Bunker number fourteen, and the story just keeps getting crazier and crazier. You've got so much overlap because you got people from the future, people from the current time. You got this bunker that they, the the people from the current time, got into, and it was all stuff sent back to them from the their future selves to try to. At first, we thought stop them from doing certain things that were going to ruin the future. But now it's almost like they're trying to force them to do certain things that are going to ensure certain things happen in the future. It's just crazy. Hmm. Um, there's so much going on with this story. It's it's really good. And this has been optioned for TV as well. So this is one of those um, Joshua Hale Fialkov, uh, excellent series. Uh, really, really neat. And the, the artwork, um, Joe Infernari does the artwork on this, and it's really, really good. So I, I like this series. Cool. But that's number 14. And I have one Archaea book. Do you have anything from Archaea or Boom? I do not. This week? Okay. Um, my Archaea book is Lantern City number five. Issue five is out this week. This is a 12-issue series, I think. Uh, Bruce Boxleitner is co-creator of this series. And it's a really cool steampunkish story. Um, you got this world that is... Uh, kind of divided into casts and uh you know there's dirigibles and all these kinds of different things and uh this guy who was at the lower level kind of the worker level um ended up in the middle of this rally where the red guard attacked and they killed this one red guard and he donned his his uniform and took his place and now he's trying to infiltrate the red guard in order to help save his friends and family so it's it's pretty interesting um, very, you know, a lot of political intrigue and then scary scenes of like, oh, is he going to get found out or not? And uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Nice. Okay. No, dynamite no. next. Go ahead. No dynamite. No dynamite. All right. Um, this week, Swords of Sorrow number five is out. Uh, only one more issue of this one, and then this series will be over. I like that cover. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the, the trio, the uh, Trinity or whatever they're calling them, the three women who are the, the saviors, uh, Vampirella, um, Deja Thoris, and um, Red Sonia. So mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. It's been a really neat series because you brought all these different female characters from all over Dynamite Worlds um, and brought them together to battle against uh, the Ladies of Chaos and uh, Prince Charming. So he's the bad guy. Oh, so pretty, of course. <laughs> it's pretty neat, though. It's a good series. 
All right. Dark Horse is next. I got one. Hey, you probably have this one. So I'll do one other one, and then you can look. You can talk about the one you have. Um, oh, maybe not that one. Oh, well, no, I have two. Sorry. Well, shoot. You probably have one of these. I don't think you have Harrow County. I do not. Okay. So Harrow County number five came out this week. This is a great series. Um, this girl's a witch, and... Her, her father knew she was going to be a witch and the the whole little town comes against her to kill her because she's like the reincarnation of this witch that they burned on and hung on this tree back you know, several years ago, 19 years ago. Of course. And, you know, it's really good though. I mean, just the whole story has been excellent. So now um, you have this other woman who showed up at the end of the last issue who looks just like her and she lives in the city. And so you have the country girl, witch, and the city girl uh, meeting in this one. So it looks looks cool. But this Probably is another either. one option for a TV show or movie. I'm not sure which, um, but it's it's you know jumped up there as far as uh, popularity. But it's pretty cool. And this is um, Cullen Bunn and Tyler mm-hmm. Crook work on this. So Harrow County number five out this week. Nice. Okay. And yours is Mirror's Edge. Yep. yep. Had to pick it up. Exordium. Exordium? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, I just saw that this film was coming out. I picked it up because I liked the video game. Oh, yeah. That you video know, that game was, was awesome. And I, and this one leads into the new video game that's coming out. Soon. Yep. So. And that looks amazing. I don't know if you've seen, seen some seen of the plates and stuff. A couple of things from it, yeah. Wow. It's much more open world, which is cool. But mm-hmm. I mean, the, the physics of that game were just amazing. There were so many times that I sat there just beating my head with the controller because I could not make the jump or I could not. And then, you know, 10 or 15 times later, I finally like jump there, hit the wall, jump up there and grab the ledge. And then I'm like, yeah, you know, <laughs> at least I only had to do it one time. Right. You know, but yeah. oh my, that was such a great game. And I run through that. I mean, I burned through that game when I first played, I think I, I beat the whole thing in like six hours or something the first time I played it. And oh, I remember getting the demo, killing the demo forever before the game came out. Yeah. I'll play the demo forever. Yeah. It was awesome. It was great. I'm hoping that they redo the original for the Xbox One because I'd love to see the original on there with the new new game in Xbox One. Uh, that would be awesome. Mm-hmm. So Something to look forward yeah. to. Yeah. So not sure what really to expect from the story of the book, but the art itself looks pretty good. So. Yeah. I wanted, yep. I wanted to check it out. Yep. Definitely looks cool. Yep. So I have uh, four books from IDW this week. I have one from IDW this week. Uh, let's see if you, well, you probably don't have that one. So I'll start with this one. Boy One, number two, is out this week. Um, this is pretty interesting. It's, um, I, I, I don't know how to explain it. it. It's just been a really cool series. Um, it's written by H.S. Uh, Tack and, uh, Amanse Nahuelpin does the uh, Nahuelpin does the art, and the art is really good. Um, the story has been just kind of weird and interesting. It's uh, something about drugs and and like designer drugs that allow allow uh, genetic manipulation. Um, it, it's, it just looks really cool. So first the first issue was you know obviously the setup and everything, and it's. Uh, uh, this whole DNA manipulation thing, but uh, second second book looks like we get in a little more story, so it's pretty cool. Nice. Uh, my one IDW book. Yeah. Star Trek Green Lantern. Oh, three. I did not get that. Oh, it's been such a good story so far. Like it's, and there's not a whole bunch of like filler. <clears throat> this is cool. actually like they're driving the story the whole time and not just shooting off into random stuff that means nothing. I guess because cool. they. They only have five issues to do it, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, six. six, I think, on that one. Yep. Six. But, you know, so far, I've really enjoyed it. I mean, the art's pretty, pretty clean. Looks really good. Um, oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm in till the end of Spectrum War. Cool. All right. Well, I I picked up the first issue just because it was a uh, special on. Um, I thought you got it in a box. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I got it because it was in uh, Comic Block. Mm-hmm. But that was cool. Yeah. So I got uh, X Files season eleven number two, which has a cool wrap around cover. Nice. Awesome. You got yeah, you from, got issue one in uh, Nerd Block last yep. month. Yep. Yeah. Um, was it Nerd Block or Comic Block? 
comic block comic block yeah and that was a cool action figure cover yep. yeah and i had already picked up the first issue and read it so i didn't have to do anything with that. i just put it away but it was cool nice. uh, but this one you know this series is really interesting because it follows the original series uh, we've had a whole nother season on top of season nine and it's still we're not sure how the storyline is going to fit in with the six issue miniseries that's coming at the beginning of the year with the, the kind of the it's not a relaunch it is a continuation of the story um, but this has been good. It, I really like this. Um, the artwork is different, you know, different kind of art. But no, it's it pretty good, cool. Yeah. 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 So I like that. Um, yeah. Uh, another one I picked up because the art is amazing and the storyline is just really cool uh, is Onyx. That's what I was thinking earlier. Yeah. Onyx number two is out this week. Um, I, that cover is just amazing. I really like that cover. It's kind of simplistic, but it's artsy, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but art in this book, like that scene right there, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like it. So it's it's a good story so far. Um, you've got Onyx, who's the last survivor of the planet um, Pelamosa, and uh, this it's a. Uh, uh, I think it's a woman. I, I can't remember. I don't know. I think we saw it at the end of the last one. But anyway, it's following this spore that kills planets. And the spores come to Earth, and Onyx is there to, to destroy the spore. So it's kind of, um, you know, that's what the story's all about. It's, it's pretty cool. Mm. Cool. Uh, yep. And the last one I got, and I picked this up just because uh, the cover looked amazing, and I really, I really want to see kind of where this goes. Um, it's a story by... Uh, Paul Allor, or Allor, A-L-L-O-R, and Paul Tucker does the artwork on it, um, but it's called Tet, hmm. and Tet number one was out this week, and it's uh, set in Vietnam. Oh, uh, I get Tet. More time. Tet yep, man. so it really looks good. Um, the artwork is cool. You know, it's uh, it's pretty good. So it just looks like a good book. I'll let you know how it is. Um, but yeah, it, it, the comics experience and IDW teamed up to do this book, and it, it looks looks excellent. So, cool. All right, um, Image. We got Image and Marvel left this week. Yep. So, yep. Okay. I get, uh, I get you want to start? Oh, you got two. two? Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. You got like fifteen? No, um, six. I think this week. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, I know what that one is. I know you got that one. I don't know if you get that one or not. Probably not. I don't think you got the other one I get. Okay. I'm reasonably sure you do not get this title. You don't get Outcast? Oh, you should. This is one of those. Like Batman, you should just pick it up and put it away in your box. <laughs> because this is option for a TV series. You know, it's coming to Cinemax. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it, the story is just amazing. You know, this guy... Um, I can never remember his name. I hate that. And when I'm not reading it, you know. Right. Um, anyway, the the main character um, was it Cal? No. Anyway, I, he's uh, he. They call him the outcast. These the demon things or whatever that inhabit people. Mm -hmm. When he touches those people that have these things in them, it hurts them physically. And when he like is down at their mouth, he can draw out this creature and and it. it dissipates and it's just really weird but so there's this priest or pastor who's working with him to try to cast out these demons he doesn't believe but he still sees that he has this power now there's some kind of interesting um, um, conspiracy going on between all of them and this there seems to be this one leader uh, it's just really cool it's a neat story it's you know robert kirkman um and uh um paula Zaseta does the art and it's it's really cool. I like it. Kirkman's got several books out, so it's like you're just yeah, you know, any of them you get, you're you're getting quality product. Oh yeah, yep. So speaking of which, I do have his other book that was out this week, Walking Dead 146. Nice. Um, this is called A Breaking Point Reached, and you know, there's been a lot of build up here the last few issues with the Whispers. Uh, the Whispers are this group of humans, living humans who basically have killed some of the walkers and they take their skin and they wear walker skin and they walk with the walker um, crowds 
and the the hordes or whatever they call them and they you know stay safe by staying with inside of the walkers the walkers don't eat them because they think they smell like mm-hmm. like dead people right. um alpha is the leader and she's like crazy um her daughter something happened that um um Rick's son Carl um, found her and, and saved her, you know. And then uh, um, now she kind of wants to leave and be with with Carl and, and Rick and everybody. And last issue, there was this whole big uh, thing between them. Where basically, or Easter issue before, she basically said, you know, there's going to be a line between you guys and us, and don't cross that line anymore. Don't come here anymore. But as they were leaving, she told Rick take care of my daughter. You're the only one who can. So it's kind of showing weakness towards him, even though Mm -hmm. she had told her people that any kind of affection towards anybody is weakness. And we can't have weakness in this group, you know, but she also showed Rick that there's this huge horde of walkers that they have contained. And she told Rick, if you come back, everything you have will be destroyed. So, I mean, there's something really bad going to happen. So what ended up happening was as they were going back, they found the line that they had made and the line was lined with the heads of six or seven of their people. Um, Ezekiel being one of them, his major character who had been Michonne's love interest and he's dead now. So there's a whole bunch of them who are dead with their heads on pikes and their heads are going, you know, cause no, it's zombie heads. Nice. Yeah. So now it's kind of the fallout from all that. Here's all these people who died. Rick had to go back and go, these people died and we can't do anything about it. And he doesn't really want to tell them, Hey, they got a whole horde of walkers over there because you know, freak everybody out. But, uh, it's, it's been good. This series is really, really cool. So I'm really excited to see what happens at 146 and how, um, it looks like Maggie and him are, are kind of having it out. Mm. So we'll see what happens. Nice. Poor, poor crippled Rick with only one arm and a leg that doesn't work very well. <laughs> He's in rough shape. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Much much worse off in the comic than he is in the uh, in the show. So, all right, let's see one of yours. Uh, the Wicked and the Divine issue oh, number fourteen. Cool. So awesome. also option for TV and or movie. I think TV there. I think TV. Yeah. Think yep. TV. So I mean, great looking stuff as as always. Oh, yeah. This book continues to impress. I mean. Um, and we've had a couple of the gods be killed now, so things are mm. things are kind of changing in this world a little bit. We'll see. How so, it, what's how that it story? Because I haven't read any of that. So, what's that story kind of about? Uh, the old gods come and decide to be social media slash like rock stars. Like they're just like we're here. Like you know, um, yeah. Aphrodite and every, everybody's just like we're here. This is what we are, and and you should love us. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So, Some I mean, similarities between that and what's going on in Injustice right now. Yeah, a little bit, except less music, I guess. Huh, cool. Because <laughs> they are like rock stars. It's huh, that's good. interesting. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Well, I have, um, and the, only because I had issue three, two, three, and four in my butt in my basket here, and you sent me issue one. I picked up issue five of Bitch Planet. Nice. It's been a really interesting story. Now, uh, Kelly Sue DeConnick does the uh, the writing on this, and she definitely talks a lot about feminism and you know empowering women and everything. So this is about a prison planet for women, and in this world, in the Earth world or whatever, they um, women can be sent to prison for anything. I mean, offending a man, go to prison. So there's some really interesting dynamics in the the way the the society is is designed. Um, you got the fathers who are kind of the patriarchal leaders, and uh, it, it, there's just a lot of corruption and and the, and the politics and everything. But it's uh it's pretty interesting. There's a and we haven't even gotten to the big part, which is this giant battle, um, Dumelia, which is a uh, uh, like a Hunger Games for lack of a better term, uh, kind of the thing where um, they call it Megaton in some areas. Mm-hmm. But it's basically all these people versus all these other people, and you have a team. Um, and the, the only rule is your team cannot weigh more than 2000 pounds collectively. So they can't be more than a ton collectively. And, uh, so she's this one lady who was a professional athlete and ended up in, um, uh, in the, uh, ACO, I think they call it or ACS. It's a, um, but bitch planet, basically they, uh, 
are, are allowing her to create a team to try to boost ratings for the show, you know, because they broadcast it all over, over the place. Um, plus to help fund um, things for the uh, prison planet. So mm-hmm. it's pretty interesting because you've got, you know, all these little people moving all their little pawns around and um, it's, there's some cool artwork, uh, some really neat stuff. I, I just, I really like the writing so far. Um, you know, we'll see where it goes, but uh, it's, it's pretty good. Nice. Yep. Let me do two more, and then you can do your last one. Yeah. Or do one we more, and you can same. do one. And we got oh, the we same got the last one. one. And you can talk about that one. <laughs> All right, I got Summer Deadly Class. Know. Deadly Class number sixteen. Um, and it's interesting because this is Deadly Class nineteen eighty eight number sixteen. So it's like maybe he's got plans for other ones in future years. I'm not sure, but it's really cool. Um, you know, a bunch of kids who were orphans or homeless or whatever, abandoned by their families, who go to this school to learn to be assassins. And I mean, it's drugs, sex, and rock and roll, and crazy people killing each other. Uh, it's mm-hmm. it's a cool series. But this is, uh, you know, Rick Remender. Um, really good sounds story. Like, sounds like an anime. It, it so did, and you know, it's kind of written that way in in some cases. Um, oh, yeah. But it's it's cool. It's Rick Remender and Wes Craig. Um, I, I would recommend it if you haven't been reading that. I know 16 out, but you can probably go get the the trades, um, trades for it. It's image, so it. trades are 10 bucks. Right. And you get five issues, right? Yep. Yep. So well, it's five. pretty cool. Depends on yep. the series. But most of the time it's five. Yeah. And my last one is Injection. Can you even see it? It's just so cool. I can. That's um, crazy. Injection number five. And this is a great series. This is so crazy because it's like – you know, I don't know if it's some kind of alien thing or if it's magical stuff. Or, <laughs> and they're not sure either. They just know it's some kind of weird. Something's going on. The injection, something injected into the world that shouldn't be there. So it's it's really cool. There's uh, just so much on the personal side with these people. This this issue, we start to get some answers. Uh, probably a lot more questions too, but but we start to get some answers. So um, it's Warren Ellis. So it's another one of those slow burn we've talked slow about burn. before. Yep. But it's just such a great book. And the artwork on that is, is really cool, too. The art is done by Declan Shelby, and I really like it. Um, I have this cool scene here. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stuff coming out their eyeballs. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. Not fun. No. All right. Last so book from Image. Faster than light. Yay. The spectacular first issue. It even says so right there. It does. It tells you. So this is a book. It's set not too far in the future, just not really that far at all. Um, and we have an, a you know a scientist, a genius here, Saul, Saul Fredrickson, figures out how to travel faster than light. So um, we have a group, and we have a spaceship that's being retrofitted with these new faster than light engines and using these new sensors they created. Um, so their mission is now going to be changed from what it was before. Did you yeah. read that off the back? I did. <laughs> oh, I was just reading the back. I'm like, Oh yeah, that's exactly what it says here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm not going to spoil any of it because I've read it, but it's not what you think. Cool. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, images. A lot of the image books are, are books. A lot of the images books are really good about that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's always cool to pick up one and go, I, like, what was the one I just read? Oh, Platona, Pl- mm-hmm. Platonia, or Platona yeah, from, from last, last week? week. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. excellent book. It was like I, you know, I kind of knew where it was going because I'd seen the last book, but I didn't know, you know, kind of how we were getting there. So, uh, just looks really cool. But you know, it's just like this. It looks like a great series, great story. And, you know, the foundation is here, but then what gets built on it is just like, wow, that's cool. Yeah, and that's that's the way this book starts. You start out going, awesome, we can travel faster than light. And then there's this, and then there's this. (laughs) Oh, wow. So there's some other stuff that comes about because of or is caused because of. So it's so so far, I I really, really liked it. I'm going to do a review of it. I'll probably go ahead and write that up tonight. Um, and just get that done. I don't think anybody else took it. So I'm going to go ahead and do it just because I think it's a, I think it's a good book. I think more people should pick it up. Good. Good deal. All right. 
Well, let's jump into Marvel stuff. I mean, we, you know, we, we like to spend time on the independence and, and image and, you know, cause those are just the great books. I mean, there, there's so much out there, not to say that the big two don't have some great stories, but, but you know, I, you, you, it's a lot of public, times you do. Yeah. It's in the public consciousness, really, you know, these characters. So yeah. the independence, you've never heard of this stuff. It's just starting, you, you know, so we got to tell you about it. Yep. Yep. So, um, the so I've got two that are non um Secret Wars related this week, and I had to pick them both up because you know just look pretty cool. All minor Secret Wars, so go ahead. Okay, cool. Well, first one is Darth Vader number nine, and I mean, who doesn't love Darth Vader? He's probably one of my favorite Star Wars characters ever. Um, this is just a story leading after A New Hope, and so you have you know, first Death Star was destroyed, he's kind of pissed. Uh, looking for Luke and, you know, looking for Luke in all the wrong places. Wow. Anyway. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's been really <laughs> cool. He, he met up with this, uh, this doctor who's kind of uh, very unethical uh, and uh, an Android who loves to kill people. So um, it's, it's really nice team up right there. Up um, yeah. 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 It's actually been a really great story. Um, Kieran Gillen writes this and uh, Salvador LaRocca does the art and the artwork is just, uh, it's really good. Here's a, just a cool big space scene. Oh, wow. That's I love crazy. that. It's so busy, but it's still just really cool looking. So, um, well worth reading. If you're not picking this up, it, I'm, most comic shops will have the last eight issues and you can catch up on this pretty quickly. But, uh, the star Wars stuff from Marvel, I've, I've definitely been impressed with. Um, I've, I've been a big star Wars fan since, you know, I first saw the first star Wars movie back in 1970. And, uh, you know, just, it doesn't get any better than seeing the characters in a, in a new story that kind of ties things together. It, it's really good. Right. So speaking of that, to find our way from episode six, return of the Jedi to episode seven, star Wars, the force awakens. Yeah. Uh, we have star Wars shattered empire. Number one out this week. And this is the beginning of the prequel to seven or the, 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 you know, the bridge between mm-hmm. the original uh, series and the new, uh, the new book. So, uh, so this 20, is really, there's 20 something years in between eight. Uh, it's 18 something, I think, or 18 or 19 years. So right now, kind of the same gap. Yeah. So uh, it's, it uh, this picks up right from the final moments, of the battle of Endor. And uh, it, you know, it takes us through that, that what happens afterwards. So, uh, right. It's cool. You know, you have uh, kind of the recap at the beginning. Like if you lived in a hole and never saw Return of the Jedi, let's tell you what happened. Luke mm-hmm. fought Vader, mm-hmm. cut off his hand, took off his mask, reconciled with his daddy. Anyway, um, not to spoil that for anybody who hasn't seen it, but if you haven't seen it, shame on you. Um, Greg Rucker writes this, really like his work anyway. Uh, and Marco Cicchetto is the new artist and the art is, is just Right on. I mean, I really yeah. like this. So it's cool. Nice. We'll see how it goes. Nice. So that's all that stuff that was written before is non canonical. Non canonical. Yep. So now it's we have to out build of the canon. Have to build a new canon of new stories to fill in the gaps in between. It's cool. I mean, I think uh, you know, the uh Canaan, the last Padawan been a good series um the princess leia mini series kind of gave us a different view of, of leia the new lando series is pretty cool um the star wars series is good it's picking up after uh, after new hope and then uh the darth vader series is good we've got chewbacca coming up um i think they're are they doing a han solo i thought i saw i would imagine well. that so i think they're gonna do a boba fett too yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure I saw that too. So just a ton of stuff, you know. Exactly. Disney's definitely, um, Disney and Marvel definitely capitalizing on the fact that they have the license back, and they're really, really pushing as we move towards that December release date for um, Star Wars: The Force Awakens, which you can see one day early if you live over in the UK, oh. or not one day early, but they're going to release it early. I think, right? Really. I don't know. That's what they said. Yeah, they said they were going to release it over there earlier, then they're going to release it here. So we'll be able to see it there. So there'll be people packing up to head over there to watch it just to see it first. Like, okay. That just means there'll be copies online to, to download. I'm really just trying, I'm trying to think of a movie 
that they could make in the future that would make me want to get on a plane and fly to a different country to watch yeah. it first. I, I mean, Star Wars, I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm definitely excited. That's probably the one movie for the rest of the year that I want to see. But yeah, I would not spend however much it's going to cost to fly across the the ocean to the see pond. it early. Yeah. Across the pond. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, not for me. So, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Star Wars stuff, you know, it's always cool. Um, I have six Civil War related books, and then I'm done. I have five. See, we're close. We probably have a couple of the same. Probably. I didn't see any X stuff this week, so. No. Nope. Okay. Um, Why well, now you got this one? I did get that one. Civil War number four. Number four. Pretty exciting. I mean, I, I, I like the way they've done this. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you got both Cap and Iron Man fighting to figure out what happened, and you got this assassin, Bullseye. Yep. Um, in between, we know who, you know, not to spoil three for everybody, but it was Bullseye. He did it. Uh, duh. Who would make that kind of shot, right? Well, we so, saw him at the end of number one. Oh, that's right. We did. Yeah. yeah yep. It was him standing so, there. In three, it was kind of revealed, you know, finally, hey, because I, I don't know. But yeah, it was, uh, it's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to this one. Yep. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, it's getting crazy. And we got one more issue after this. It ends with five. So, yeah, we're getting and the closer. Artwork, the art's just amazing on it. I really oh, like yeah. it. Big um, battle scenes and everything's going on. It's awesome. Yeah. I like, and then Storm, or not Storm, um, She Hulk. I like that she was infiltrating, trying to find out what was going on last issue. And that all kind of went, went uh, yeah. south at the end. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, just pretty little. interesting. Yep. All right. What's your next one? I uh, don't know if you got this one. 1602. Yep. Witch Hunter Angela Part 3. Yep. yep. I picked it up. I stayed with it. We'll see. Uh, it's been a good story so far. Yeah. Kinda. I'm going to, I'm going to write it out. I've, you know, I like the art. Yeah. Kind of, kind of lesbian heavy for my taste sometimes, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> I get tired of that. It's like, it's you don't see everybody else running around having sex all the time. And then it's like, Two women. Let's uh, let let's have them have sex halfway through the book. Hey, hey, it's Margaret Bennett and Karen Gillan that are writing it. So, yep. All right, um, Corvac Saga. Nope, you're not getting you're not getting that. Uh, this is number four. I can't remember if this is the end. Yep, this is the end. So this has been a really good series because this feeds off of Guardians three thousand which mm-hmm. was an excellent series and it ties together with the guardians of the galaxy, which, you know, we have, uh, um, Peter Quill here in the battle world, but he was actually one of the remnants from right. the original think- world that was destroyed. Star Lord so, and Pride. Yeah. Yeah. And this has been pretty cool. Cause this has him in it and there's a whole, you know, interaction there, but this, uh, you know, at the end of the last issue, Michael Korvac was like, Oh, I am Korvac. You know, it was like, Whoa, because, that there were people who were going crazy because they're like the stars and you know, the stars just don't look the same anymore. And people are like, what are you talking about? The stars? There's no stars. Just shut up. And they were turning into monsters and they were attacking. And mm-hmm. then at the end he was like, I know what they're talking about. They're talking about me. And he's in his star form, you know, it's pretty cool. Nice. So uh, we'll see what happens with him in this issue. It's definitely uh, going to be somebody duking out. Um, you got the Avengers, you got the, the guardians. Um, so it should be cool. We uh, all right. I got three more. Me too. Uh, I'm pretty sure we probably got all three of these. Well, maybe not, but maybe A Force. No, you didn't get A Force, man. No. So A Force. <laughs> like, I know what the got, A stands for. It's got all the A's in the world, <laughs> and let's just say Estrogen. This, this issue, <laughs> something happens to the wall. Okay. There's, there's a breach of the shield potentially somehow maybe definitely that's all I'm kind of saying. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's cool. I know okay. you're not getting this one. What? Planet Hulk. Totally not getting that one. I have loved this book. You got the kind of the feral Captain America riding Devil Dinosaur. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. So you throw in Doc Green, kind of helping him fight his way through Greenland. It's it's been pretty cool. He's looking for Bucky. Mm-hmm. And uh, at the end of the last issue, we came up to Red Hulk, who was kind of like, Bucky, I killed him a long time ago. <laughs> no. You know, 
So it was cool. Um, but this is the last issue, and there's definitely some bloody um, killing with the shield, and you know, it's, it's good. But I love that cover. I mean, the shield and the eye of the Hulk. That's just yeah. awesome. It's been a fun series. Um, and this is uh, Sam Humphreys writing this, and Mark mm-hmm. Laming does the artist, or does the art. And I mean, just from the beginning, you can see Devil Dinosaur is just awesome. Yeah, I'm not so excited about the new Devil Dinosaur series that's coming out. Moon, but Devil this, Dinosaur and Moon Girl or something like that. It's like what? But I, mean, I want a, I want a Captain America Devil Dinosaur series. Come on, this has been the best team up ever. Where where would they park him in DC? He would have his. He would make his own space. <laughs> they could just you know tie him up to the Washington Monument. They got that right. big pool of water right there. Right on the wall, up. just make him a nest. Yeah. Why sad. not? <laughs> All right, I'm pretty sure we have the same two last two books. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. All right. You first. Secret Wars 2099. Yep. All right. Number five. This is the end, right? Yes, this is the end. Yeah. Yep. The end for now. For now. For now. Ooh. Yep. I really hope that they continue this one over and we get to learn more about these characters because I've actually liked the characters. I just wish there was more story to them, you know? Yeah, no, I know what you mean. Um, I There's, well, I don't know. There's some stuff that I'm like, yeah, this is really cool. And then some stuff that I'm like, no, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and we know there's going to be a Spider-Man 2099. And uh, so we're, you know, looking forward to that. Um, yeah, that's kind of yeah. different. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a cool looking um, cover and stuff. So we'll see what happens. And, and I'm not real, I don't know, uh, amazing Spider Man. I'm not, I don't know. I'm just not sure if I'm going to pick it up or not. And did you get it this week? No, no, no. The new, oh, yeah, yeah, that one. <laughs> that okay. 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 <laughs> Yeah, this uh, this is a good series. You know, renew your vows. Renew your vows. Um, I like this. It, it's such a good story. I mean, Dan Slott does good work. I'm just not. I'm not loving the new idea. Not this. This has nothing to do the, with that. The, I think the, the story, neon green spider. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just not loving stuff, the, the like new the look of it. I mean, I love the Alex Ross looking cover. The Alex Ross cover. Yeah, is amazing. that's cool. But, I'll buy it for that. But well, my whole thing with that is I I just think it's time for Dan Slott to let Spider Man go. Yeah, he's been doing it for a long time now, so yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's uh, it, it's been a good story. It's been a good run. I don't know. I, I mean, I'll probably get the first issue and see how I like it. Right. But I'm I'm really thinking that some of the the Marvel stuff is where I'm going to start cutting the fat. Well, yeah, we no, post uh, post Secret Wars. I'm- I'm excited for that to cut the fat for Marvel because Secret Wars, Secret Wars is them capitalizing really on every major story or every popular story arc they've ever had. They're releasing yeah. a title in that name, in that vein, yeah. basically. So any of those stories, everybody loves those. So we want to see what's going on with those stories. But yeah. once we get back to the reset and we're back to ongoing normal titles, yeah, uh, there's a lot of these characters that I don't care about. So. Yeah, I mean, there's stuff that I, I'm just not sure. Like, you know, I, I love Rick Remender's work on uh, the, uh, Avengers and, and Uncanny uh, and um, New Avengers and all that. That was great, you know, but – and Hickman stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. Love that. But they're both taking a step back now, right? Yeah. Going Hickman's, into post. So, cool. yeah. So, but neither one of them are doing anything post-Secret Wars. So, mm-hmm. like, that was what was holding me to the Avengers stuff was yep. their storylines leading up to Secret Wars. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm going to have a hard time getting back into things after Secret Wars. I just, yeah. I, I know I am. I, there's so many other stories out there right now that I love reading, that I look forward to every week. And, you know, the... Well, it's going to be like what we're, what we're experiencing with DC, where we're cut yeah. down to, the, you know, one, yep. to, you know, a, a, a big DC week. It's like three books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, my last my last week at DC was through three books, and I was like, "Hey," <laughs> and mm-hmm. a couple more weeks of that, and I'm not going to have you know Batmite and Bizarro are going to be done, and right. uh, I probably drop DC bombshells after a couple more issues, and well, so that'll leave me with He Man and Injustice until that's over. Well, it, it appears that the 
some indications out of DC is that the DCU has pretty much already failed. They're already acknowledging that the DCU is a failure. So Time for another reboot. Yeah, they're going to somehow <laughs> wrap it back into continuity again. So that Crisis means, on sucky Earths. Well, and that's the reason I kind of, I didn't get, um, what was it out this week? Action Comics 44? I didn't pick that up. And um, Batman Superman 44 because I heard they're going to end that, that arc with um, Truth <clears throat> and all that. They're going to end that kind of quickly now. Hmm, interesting. So, well, who I'm knows? I'm away from that now. Maybe their uh, their next reboot will be the one. Third time's a charm, right? Right. Oh, wait. It's fourth time? Seventh. Third, tenth. Oh. <laughs> I lose track. <laughs> it's there, more like... Well, there, there, have been, there have been, what, five major crises? Crises? Have crises there? Seasons? Well, there yeah. was Crisis on Infinite Earths. There was... Um, identi- well, identity crisis. We don't. Do we really count, does it? Yeah, okay. it's, it's crisis. it? I felt like identity so crisis. crisis led into um, infinite crisis. Yeah, and then final crisis, mm-hmm. and then flashpoint, which was really out of final crisis, wasn't it? it seems like it, but it's it felt crisis. like it was, and then convergence. Yeah, so that's six. But yeah, I, I feel like convergence. Should uh, have there was also called. there was also in the nineties discounts zero hour. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't. I mean, zero hour had zero issues of all the books, but I don't feel like there was really a reset after that. Yeah, I don't remember. I haven't yeah, read forever. But I, I mean, was and, going through a list of them earlier. Yeah, I mean, Zero Hour was a great series. I really liked that. I loved Hal Jordan with all the rings <laughs> and you know the parallax. And I mean, that was amazing. That was some of the best stuff ever. Um, and then I really liked when they brought Hal Jordan back as the Spectre. That was a great series. And the, the interaction mm-hmm. with the rest of the DC Universe, that was cool. But yeah, I mean, I kind of lost a taste for it after, you know, the Identity Crisis was really, really good. That was such a good series. And then Infinite Crisis and the whole countdown and all that stuff. The mm-hmm. lead-in was great. It kept me interested. I was buying almost everything every week. And uh, Infinite Crisis was like, yeah, this is cool. And the bring back Superboy, but don't call him Superboy. Call him something else. And, you know, imprison him in the middle of the sun and all that stuff. I mean, that was so cool. And then it was like, now let's do 52 and let's count up 52 more issues. And I'm like, okay, about 24 issues into that, I got bored. (laughs) Like, give me a story. And that's what I'm scared of with, um, because we're going to have Batman and Robin Eternal start soon. And it's going to be a weekly series like Batman Eternal was. But I'm more, I want to pick it up, but I don't want to pick it up because it's a weekly series. Yeah. And I know how that is like a roller coaster of, oh, sweet, a good issue. Two yep, bad and two issues. sucky ones. Yeah, yep. it's like, oh. Yep. So. Well, you know, it was something I was reading. I, last week I got um, Hickman's The Quick and the Dead. Or the, yep. dead, of the dead and the Dying, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, is that what it's called? The Dead and the Dying. Great, great series. Really, really neat. But he said at the end, you know, hey, we were late. We tried to do too much. We did a big book that kind of cut up our lead time and all this other stuff. And I feel like when you've got a team working on a book and you're trying to put something out every week, you've got this much time to prep that book. Yeah. Because in order to get it out, you know, you may be writing it two weeks from or two or three weeks before or six weeks before or whatever to make sure that it hits all your publishing deadlines. But you're still six weeks ago. And then five weeks ago, and then four weeks ago, and then three, every week you're writing a new book and pushing it through. Yep. You only have that one week window to get it done. And sometimes to come up with a good storyline, I don't know. I just can't see. I mean, it's it's got to be a lot of work for some of these guys. And then sometimes it should be a lot of work for them, and it's not. <laughs> you know? well, they- you're reading the story going, did you go, this week I want a fight scene and make it 22 pages long? Right. Well, most of the time, like some of the writers I've talked to, most of, if they're on a series and they know they're going to be on that series for a while, they're, a, you know, three months ahead. They're like, oh, sure, sure. You know, issue blah, blah, blah came out and I wrote that three months ago. You know? Right. But if you're so, running a weekly book, you're still kind of tied oh, so to that ridiculous. every week. You've got to have so much stuff. And Yeah. And, and that's what, it, and, and a lot of it makes it like filler. Like they're like, oh, we need to space it out. Like, you can see yeah. on a whiteboard, they have like, all right, here's where it starts. Here's where it ends. Here's like five points that have to happen in the middle. Right. 
but we have 70 other issues. So just make some stuff up. <laughs> right. Let's do a, let's do a zero issue and let's do a, you know, Christmas issue every year, every, every 12 months we get a Christmas issue. Every character gets an origin, origin <laughs> issue. Um, their parents, their dog, issues, parents, you know. yep. Something about their favorite Jeez. colors, you know. Jeez. So, yeah, anyway, too funny. But, yeah, I, you know, I, I'm wondering what's going to happen with Marvel. So, I don't know. Did you uh, did you see my new poster? I did. I noticed it in the background. Isn't that I cool? Yeah, I haven't hung it up yet, but it's it DC was just is. really kind of cool. It's DC. It says, um, this job. This is a job for Superman on the top. But I love the way the colors are kind of running and stuff. It's just really neat. Walmart, four ninety nine. Nice. Yeah, same as my other one. Actually, there's a DC one just like my Avengers one up there. Uh, that's Justice League that I want to pick up. So. I have I have the DC one. Oh, do you? Cool. Yeah, I just haven't. It's still in its tube. I haven't unrolled it and framed okay. it. I'll probably pick it up and frame it, and then I'll just swap out for different I had, shows. I had to go to four different stores to find it. Oh, well, that's like this one, the DC one. They had one. It was, it was on the display, and I'm like, oh, this is awesome. And I went through every one of the things. I'm like, it's not there. Then I went through the side thing. It wasn't there. I went through the other side thing. There were three posters in there, and one of them was that. I was like, oh, the last place you look, you know, it was there. Mm-hmm. Anyway. All right, guys. So lots of comics this week. Great stuff. Um, one other thing I wanted to talk about. I know this is kind of stupid, and it's not really necessarily comic book related, but it's video game related. And it is news from the week. Um, brand new Pokemon game coming out. Yay, everybody's excited about Pokemon. Pokemon. Um, but and Pokemon. Instead of having to have a 3DS to play this or a Nintendo Wii, this is going to be an app that's downloadable for your phones. And it's called Pokemon World, and it plays in augmented reality, which is really cool. It'll use your phone's camera, and you'll be able to look at an area and see a Pokemon there and try to catch it and fight it or whatever. And then you'll be able to fight other people who have the app. Um, you'll be able to team up with them and do all that kind of stuff. There'll be ways to track like, oh, there's a Pikachu within 200 feet. I don't know if you've seen the video, mm-hmm. uh, but it's out there. If you check a Pokemon <laughs> world, it's all over Facebook. It's all over everywhere, but it's really cool. It just looks like a neat game and it adds that interaction. Um, you know, it's kind of pushing people to, to, to work a little bit. Cause you're going to have to walk, you know, mm-hmm. to find something and uh, maybe pull people together to congregate. It looks like there's some really cool, uh, team up battle that you can do maybe at different places. Uh, the one thing they showed was a big thing in Times Square where there were a whole bunch of people there with their Pokemon, all of them fighting against Mewtwo. Pretty cool. Wow. So wow. there may be, you know, instances that pop up in the real world. Kind of cool. Um, just a, a neat, uh, almost seems to me like a neat experiment. Let's see yeah. how this works, you know. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. We'll see what well, happens. It's, it's good they're releasing it, you know, as an app, and it's not a new piece of hardware you have to go pick up. Right, right. I think that's kind of cool. And that's yeah. nice, but they're utilizing existing technology, which is great. But they're also adding the augmented reality, which we've seen in the uh, in the 3DS. We've seen the augmented reality tool in that within the, the 3D thing where you can look out and take pictures or video and you can see stuff around. They did it with the um, like the face blaster game. Uh, mm-hmm. which sounds dirty, but it's not. And it's got, uh, you know, you see little people take a picture of somebody's face and it flies around and you shoot at it. It's nice. Interesting. Yeah. So anyway. Sounds good. All right. Cool stuff this week. Um, I'll tell you, I, we'll uh, do another show here. Uh, I've got some really great books to go through. We'll do another book review show, um, do some giveaways. Uh, we've got a few comics that we do want to give away. I think I have uh, a Lando maybe to send out to somebody. Mm-hmm. Uh, so most of our other folks have gotten their toys, we uh, toys or, or comics or whatever. Um, I still have one of these Ant-Man to give away. Um, so we may do that on another show. Not today because, you know, just we're out of time. So we're out of time. But thank you all for watching. We appreciate it. We hope you got some great comics. And if not, we hope you got some ideas for new comics to go pick up. Um, like that uh, Broken Brook Moon from Steve Niles and American Gothic Press. Something and Faster cool, something Than Light from Image. Faster Than Light from Image. That's definitely a cool looking book. So, all right. Well, we hope that to, you'll leave us some comments. Let us know kind of what you think about the world of comics now. You know, we talked about DC and Marvel and our low expectations. <laughs> Let us know what you think. You know, kind of what you're, you're uh, anticipating happening. Um, don't forget comicbook.com, our website. Um, all of the articles up there, new reviews, new articles every day. Um, we're on Facebook, Comic Booked, and Two Comic Book Dudes, and Twitter, and Pinterest, and everywhere. Everywhere. 
let us know if we didn't pick up something that you're reading, if it's something we should be reading, except do not tell us to pick up blood strike because we're not picking up blood strike. <laughs> yes, that is true. <laughs> Thanks everybody. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye.